Hello, this is Pam Hall, and today's guest is Karen Thurlow from Midland Conservation District. So Karen, you've been a business manager for over 40 years, a business owner, farmer, and beekeeper, Mid lived in Midland most of your life, and passionate about conservation practices of all types, youth education, conservation, and agriculture as a big priority. You're certified in environmental education programs, Project Learning Tree, American Forest Foundation, Project Wild DNR, and, and currently with the Coleman Agri-Science Agri Advisory Board and Land Lab Planning Committee. You're also a volunteer at MCTV in Dahlia Hill. So how did you get started with the Conservation District, Karen? Oh, back in 2014, the state, I guess, had contacted the um, Natural Resource Conservation Service Office, and they were um, looking for people to start the district back up after a brief shutdown. So I sent in a letter to the state saying that I would be happy to serve on the board and get the district back going. Um, I didn't really know much about what the district did, except for that they sold trees. So um, in August of 2014, I was appointed with five other board or four other board members, and we got the district back up to starting. So after, you know, that's that's how I got on the. And then after six months of that, uh, they decided that I was doing everything that they needed done. So they decided to make me the administrator and um, appoint another board member. So that's how I got where I am today. What is the conservation district? Um, well, I'm going to read this because this is right off the um, MACD or the Michigan Association of Conservation Districts website. So conservation districts are established under state law to carry out natural resource management programs at a local level by providing technical assistance and tools to manage and protect land and water resources in the U.S. So there are more than 3,000 in the United States, depending on the state. They also may known as soil and water conservation districts. Um, nationally, there's um, uh, districts in each county, each state. So uh, there are 83 counties in Michigan, and we have 75 conservation districts in Michigan. And there's really no easy answer to describe what a conservation district does because each county is different, so each demographic's different, so each district is different. Um, we help business owners, we help rural property owners, we work with farmers, we work with uh, landowners who have hunting property. Um, so we are local providers of natural resource conservation, education, and services. So we work along with the Natural Resource Conservation Service, or the NRCS, and we work with the USDA. The USDA has cost share insurance programs. They have loans. I'm not real familiar with all the programs that the USDA has, and there's a lot of them. Um, but we work with the NRCS office. We do conservation planning for landowners. So if there's a problem for erosion or they have wildlife habitat they want to improve, we help them with that. So it's pretty interesting. But again, each district is so different. There's just no really cut and dry answer for that. Okay. Well, how did conservation districts get started? Well, they were established in the Dust Bowl era of the 1930s. And I, um, you know, the farmers were homesteaded land for serving in the war. So there, were, there was a lot of farming going on. There was a lot of working up the land that had never been worked before. And in that era, created the dust storms. So uh, I'm sure we have some pictures to show you during the presentation. Um, but anyway, the dust storms were ravishing the country. So Hugh Hammond Bennett was, he's known as the father of conservation. He was the one who kind of started the soil water conservation movement. He tried to get the government to understand that, you know, the farming practices were bad and people needed help. He was a farmer himself, grew up on a farm. He worked for, uh, I think it was the soil service. I can't remember what it is. I got it wrote down here. But anyway, he, he worked for the government, but they kind of 
poo-pooed his ideas about the land and the soil. They actually made a statement that said, the soil is one indestructible, immutable asset of that the nation possesses. It is the one resource that cannot be exhausted or cannot be used up. And that is so wrong. And throughout his whole career, he tried to point that out to the government that, you know, the soil is very important, which it is. The soil is the only, I mean, it's living, it's, it's full of nutrients, it's, it's what we need to survive. If we kill our soil, we kill ourselves. So that's how it got started back in the Dust Bowl. Actually, he got Congress to listen to him, and there's a really good video that you can go to YouTube and um, watch it. It's about 20 minutes long, but it tells the whole story. But he we'll was put the link at the end. Yeah, he was he was in the having a meeting at Congress, and he kept stalling because he knew a dust storm was coming, and it was the first dust storm that ever hit Washington D.C. So it kind of made his point pretty loud because he's sitting there and all of a sudden the room darkens and you know you hear the wind and everybody's like what's going on and so he gets up and he throws open the curtains and there's the dust storm hitting the the capitol you know so then and there is when they enacted the bill to uh it was actually started the new the new deal mm -hmm. so which our green new deal is based on and so it all started with soil conservation then. Yeah, yep. It started with uh, the farmers, you know, the government helping the farmers <laughs> through um, your tax dollars get put into a pot, and then those dollars come back into our communities through cost share programs. So, in and, and the New Deal started back there. They they came up. The New Deal were programs like the public work projects, financial reforms, um, they did uh, well, the federal programs like the came out of the Great Depression, the Farm Security Administration, um, National Industry Recovery Act, so that's when all those little programs came into effect to help people that were having problems. Okay. So where does the funding come from? So the funding for the cost share programs, like I said, it comes out of your tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're paying taxes and some of that money is going into a fund that actually goes to these programs. So the programs help water, air, and soil resources. That's what we, can, we are concerned with. That's the resource concerns that we work with. Okay. Tell us about Midland Conservation District. Well, after coming back into uh, back into business back in 2015 we didn't have any funding so our our funds were limited as far as what we could do but we started working right away with the NRCS office and so we started getting to know the farmers and the landowners and the community and what kind of programs they were getting help with um, started getting some training on how to do conservation planning um, you know, so it was, it was kind of a slow start because we didn't have any money, and the government, we don't we don't get any funding for the government. We're pretty much operate on grants and donations and volunteers. Okay. So, what are some of the programs or projects that you are currently involved with in? Well, do we know? We started out um, back in the day. We we did a fourth grade farm tour. So the Lorenz family from Millen County here has hosted the farm tour for over 33 years. And they have all of the fourth grade students from the Midland County come out to the farm and enjoy a day. They have 16 different stations. So they can go, they can see a chemical storage facility, they get schooled on soil health. There's a dairy cow out there, so they get to pet the cow and see the dairy cow. All the big equipment is sitting there. They have a, a station, where does all your food come? So a lot of these kids don't know that their food doesn't come from the grocery store. Right. You know, and we had a fun little experiment this year. We uh, did a poster contest with the fourth grade students and we had schools submit posters of what the kids learned out there. And it was really, really interesting to see 
what kids learned and you know just the different pictures and I did post them on our Facebook page if anybody wants to look they're really cute I, I saw them they were really yeah cute. and they were really excited about that and then so all the kids that participated we are going to take them a tree when we have the trees so they'll get mm. a tree for participating in the spring for mm. Earth Day so nice. uh, and then we have the earth tunnel and the soil tunnel which we take to events they were specially made for our district back in the 90s by design craftsmen which are no longer in business but they were put together by grants from several um, do um, partners in the area um, one teaches soil health and one teaches water health I had one set up at Dow Diamonds this summer so a lot of people really you know showed a polluted side of a river a clean side of a river so we have that for a program we take those to events uh, you can rent them um, for you know and then that money that goes into the rent actually goes back into that program so we've fixed up some of the trailers we've put new tires and and got the lights fixed on the trailers and made them roadworthy so after sitting around for that long they you know needed all that stuff um, we have the I'm involved with the Coleman Agriscience program which is really exciting for me I started on their advisory committee about three years ago and I just really get passionate when I talk about that program because it's such a cool program and a lot of the Midland County students aren't told that it's out there to participate so agriculture has several jobs that kids can get into so this program is for 10th to 12th grade students um, they have a barn they have a greenhouse they raise cattle they raise pigs people donate the animals the kids raise them and take care of them and then they go to the fair with them um, they do chickens they do a you know and everything goes right back into that program so it's a really cool program they also have um, a 80 acre forest land up off of Fike Road they have a 40 acre piece of land over by North Bradley and then someone in the area donated them a seven acre plot right by their school so the projects that they're doing up there are really exciting and it's going to teach the kids a lot of a lot of good things about farming so they're going to have a oh different crops they're going to have community gardens they're putting up a greenhouse so it's just going to they're calling it the land lab and it's just going to be a really cool asset for the Coleman area and that you know and it's, it's a good asset for all the schools in the area more people should take advantage of that program and then we developed a good relationship with the Northwood students for sustainability this year um, they had called me last year at the tree sale and needed some trees to plant on the property so I was like yeah I'll donate some and we'll we'll get together and we'll plant them and it was really fun because I got to meet a lot of really cool students um, they all got the same ideas you know they like conservation they want to help the earth so that was fun they've come out and helped us clean up the barn um, which we'll get to uh, we do a little thing with Chippewa Nature Center I like to partner with them they're they're great so you know they got a great thing going out there so anytime I can help with them I really like to work out there so they do a Earth Day experience Earth Day it'll be on April 19th in 2020 which is celebrating the 50th year of Earth Day so hopefully there'll be lots of nice Earth Day celebrations and we'll get the word out that we need to help with the conservation efforts too um, and then we've done Conservation Matters television show here at MCTV, which, you know, we've been kind of on a sabbatical with that, but hopefully we're going to get back out into that this summer and, and get some new shows. And I've really learned a lot in the last couple of years, so I think, uh, you know, I've got a lot to share. Um, we do a tree sale, which is what I knew the tree, the Conservation District for. So every year, every Conservation District in the state of Michigan and pretty much every state I think they have tree sales so that's where a lot of our funding comes from is our tree sale so we work with farmers local landowners we get them good deals on trees you know we do have the person that just wants one or two to plant in their yard you know that type of thing um, we have a barn that we saved from demolition which is really cool we use that barn for uh, I, I don't know how long but I know we had a pretty good lease so when the conservation district shut down we kind of lost that lease with the county and they didn't want to work with us anymore so um, I'd pretty much given up and 
on getting the barn back or ever using it again, but then they decided to tear it down. And the people of the community, I was getting phone calls every day, is like, Karen, you got to save that barn. And I'm like, I've been trying, you know, and it was kind of frustrating for me, but because I really wanted to save that barn. And finally, I just got that last push to kind of let the township supervisors know that I wanted it. I let the the foundations who had put money into it back in the 90s and did a lot of work, I let them know. I let the commissioners know and, and finally we came to an agreement where we could make a purchase of the barn. So we got the purchase and five acres of that barn and we we're looking to do some really cool projects with that. Like we want to do the tree sales out there of course. We want to make it a educational hub kind of for, I would like to focus on agriculture history here in Midland County because there's a lot of people out there who have been farming this land in Midland County for 100, 100 years, you know, and they don't they don't get any recognition, and I think they should because you know that's where our food comes that's where from. our food comes from. So, so that went on for two years with was trying to get the you have co accomplished a lot, Karen. Yeah, I know. I was writing it all down on a piece of paper the other day and I went wow I have done a lot because sometimes I just feel like you know but I'm really passionate about what I do I love this job so they always say if you love what you do it's not really a job so yeah, you've got your heart into it yeah. yes I do so oh. thank you for all your organizing and so forth and um, it, we're we're really lucky to have you and this shows how much of a grassroots uh, this is when you when you hear the details of the involvement from the community and how important it is for the community to be involved with with uh, Midland Conservation District. Feel free to call Karen and let her know what you may want to do to to help Midland Conservation District. So, what have you planned, or what are your goals for the future, Karen? So, the goals for the future are just to get that barn up and running. We need a new roof. We got a water problem there. The water from the adjoining property is like running right into the west side of the barn. So we have, so that's deteriorating the barn a little bit. So we'll have some work there to do. Um, we want to make the, an educational garden out there, maybe some paths through the woods to have interpretive trails so you can identify trees and wildflowers and things like that out there. Um, just learning more planning, working with more people in the community. Um, so speaking of like volunteers, uh, what uh, what ideas would would be out there? Maybe people could get school credit for volunteering. You know, I don't. I'm not really sure how that works. I know that some some schools do require you to help out with a you know public or a community or a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. for. Um, volunteering but you know I hopefully when spring comes around and we get the tree sale underway get the new roof on the barn there will be a lot more projects coming then um, right now we're just kind of concentrating we need more funding for the barn so I want to you know get a fun drive going because we do need that barn to be safe for you know it's safe but you know it needs some outdoor stuff done to it the barn is pretty in, in pretty good shape but it's the land around it because all that water has been flowing in there it's it's caused it to be mushy so the ground's heaving and so we, we just got to get that water problem taken care of but goals right now we've got funding coming in we've actually got grants from the state um, to help us so we've hired a new person as of July and we're in the process of hiring a new person so that'll give us more people at the office to be able to help people with their questions you know I get calls all the time different things some of them are DNR related and we have to refer them over there and you know people have problems with people will be you know on their property so we get those kind of calls and we just refer them to the right people and some of them are kind of comical but you know that's that's the name game of the business or you know mm -hmm. it's it's a fun job I just really enjoy it so so if uh, people want a nice ride out in the country to you know, go see the barn and help support the Midland Conservation District that's that would be a nice family event um, yeah. would would pets ever be 
um, allowed. Um, oh, yeah, I don't have a problem with pets. We will be having an annual meeting in May, mm -hmm. so we'll have more about our projects then, and hopefully people will, you know, get on our website maybe and pay attention to that if they want to know what we're doing. I like to keep that updated with what's going on. I like to do the Facebook, you know, some people like Facebook, some people don't, but I like to post on the Facebook about things that we're doing, so that's a one way to keep up what's going on. Um, we're having a couple of workshops in the springtime. We're going to do, because of the, the farmers are working with hemp products now and we want growing advice, we're going to do a workshop for them. Hemp is a really good crop for farmers to start implementing into the rotation because hemp cleans up the soil. It, it's good for the products that they're making clothes and medicine and it's just an amazing product it, but the farmers aren't really understanding it so we're working on a workshop to get them to understand you know the laws and the requirements and what they need to do so that's going to probably be a big workshop in February and then um, we are going to do a tree planting one in March for people who are planting trees so if they don't know how to plant a tree they can come and learn and what I'm thinking out at the barn I'll be able to give demonstrations to while mm -hmm. they come you know if they come to pick up their tree and they say how do I plant this tree I can show them how to plant it because I have a, a space to do that I was doing the tree sale out of a U-Haul truck in the parking lot for the last three years and that was that yeah. was pretty fun you know you also also maintenance too and in, in feeding the tree and so forth yeah um, trees can get diseased and we need to be on top of that or we could lose them yeah it's hard when you're planting these little seedlings though too you got to get them in just right and mm -hmm. you know so there's a lot of variables some people think you can just pop it in the ground but you know and, and young trees put back more oxygen into the atmosphere yeah. we should all plant at least mm -hmm. one tree a year mm -hmm. yeah. so I know you've worked with bees and so forth um, are there going to be any upcoming workshops to help uh, you know with the bees and encourage the uh, the uh, uh, the pollination. The pollination. Yeah. Thank you. That was the word <laughs> I was looking for. Well, um, I have done a workshop on bees before. Um, usually, I kind of gauge my workshops on the requests. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, I really want to start working with like the fifth grade students and being able to get into the schools mm -hmm. and maybe doing talks about any subject they'd like to learn about because mm -hmm. I am certified in the Project Learning Tree and the Project Wild. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of curricular um, programs that I can bring to the schools. Mm -hmm. And with the barn and the property that we have now, we could bring them to us. And you know that would, that would be kind of cool too. So in the future, we have a lot of things going on. <laughs> so any, any workshops, I'm all open. If anybody wants me to create a workshop for a subject they're passionate about, I'm willing to do it. Well, I've seen I've seen uh, different uh, projects such as how to invite wildlife to your backyard mm -hmm. to help you know with the uh, conserving not just bees but also the birds and and different animals that are yeah anybody with a yard I mean there's no reason to have a lawn that you have to put money into with fertilizers and grasses and stuff I mean, make it natural I think the natural look is much better and it's much more easy to maintain you don't have the chemicals from the fertilizers going into the water I mean we have a big problem in Michigan with the phosphorus levels and the the stuff getting into the lakes and we really need to be concerned about that it's it's becoming a big problem and it is you know we need to we need to be careful about what we're putting down the drain what we're putting down the the drain systems you know like in parking lots of um, businesses they have those sewer drains well people just will dump things in the parking lot because they think that's a good way to get rid of it but it's not that's going directly into the storm system you know that's going directly into the river so that's not a place to dump things <laughs> and there and there's only so much they can clean up in the in the water plants right. there are some yeah. things that remain so Karen I appreciate you being here today as a I guest I appreciate you having me Pam is. I I think people need to know that we're out there that what we're doing the conservation practices that we have the NRCS if anybody wants to ask questions or come into the office we always we always like that okay and we will have those numbers to contact Karen directly at the end of the uh, program today so thank you for being here again on Earth News thank you
can't grow without that precious link. Water is the key to life, it always needs to be. Save our great lakes. Protect the water. Save our city of Flint.